God bless you, family. Thank you for tuning in. So I have some pre-tribulational uh, scripture references and um, just kind of deeper principles to consider tonight. And I also wanted to share just a few quick scriptures about anger, <clears throat> indignation, hatred, and uh, I'll flesh that out a bit more on the why. Well, let's run through a quick handful of scriptures on that piece to begin. Psalm 7, verse 11, God judges the righteous and God is angry with the wicked every day. It's good to have righteous anger. It's good to hate the Lord hates. We hear a lot about love, um, and that is good and proper and, and a fruit of the Holy Spirit, but not at the exclusion of hating is evil. And uh, again, this is something that God is angry with the wicked every day. Um, you know, it's not up in his heart, but the Lord, God's word says he, he hates that. And as we follow God's word, we, uh, we should hate what he hates as well. <clears throat> Proverbs 8, verse 13, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. So if you fear the Lord, you, you give him reverence and honor, and he alone you fear. If you have that, then you also must hate evil. It's to hate evil, pride, and arrogancy, and the evil, and the forward mouth do I hate. We should all those things. People sometimes say, oh, it's a strong word. Sure, I guess, but... um. It's biblical. It's biblical to hate this wretchedness and wickedness. And I'm sure a lot of you guys are, are right there with me. You hate the things that we see. We don't recognize our world anymore. For those watching America, we don't recognize our country anymore. I hate those things. <laughs> I hate that wickedness. And, and I hate that. Expensive. Really. Romans 12, verse 9. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. It's like a command. Um, if your love is sincere, your love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Yep. Just more scriptural backing of um, this concept of hating wicked things. Psalm 97, 10. Ye that love the Lord hate evil. Wow, it's like an equation. If you love the Lord, you hate evil. Two plus two is four. If you love the Lord, you hate evil. He preserves the souls of the saints. He delivers them out of the hand of the wicked. Hmm. It also seems like, a, yeah, like an equation further. If you love the Lord, you hate evil. It's almost like an algebraic equation, right? If you love the Lord plus hating evil equals the Lord will preserve the souls of his saints and deliver them out of the hand of the wicked. Hmm. Might be something to that. If we're being too permissive or allowing <clears throat> evil, maybe we're going to start getting ensnared and uh, not delivered out of the hand of the wicked in certain things. But if we sharpen that thing up and love the Lord and hate that evil stand against it a line in the sand say no I don't like that um, maybe there'll be more deliverance out of situations hands of the wicked just a thought on that I think of Matthew 21 12 or 13 just talks about when Jesus cleansed the temple flipped the tables um, he said it is written quoting scripture my house will be called a house of prayer but you are making it a den of robbers we're familiar with that story, many of us. Ephesians 4, 25, uh, rather 26 and 27. Be ye angry. So it's like a command, be angry. A lot of people say, don't be angry. I say, well, God says, be angry. But also the caveat, and sin not. So we can be angry. We got to rein it in. Like Jesus cleansed in the temple. He didn't take it further and lose control. He cleansed the temple. He was angry, but he did not sin. Uh, let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. <clears throat> so, yeah, these things popped up on my spirit today. Um, in the workplace, I felt almost like a little bit of a spiritual um, warfare going on where, you know, I felt a, a fellow colleague crossed some lines with me and I called him on that, and I'm a man, I communicate directly, and um, I, I hated what he did, I was angry at it. And I said, hey bro, that's not cool. Um, like pretty clearly I was saying, like, don't speak to me like that. And um, and it was fine, I mean, I guess there's more uh, critique, like uh, gentle ways to do this. I'm not good at that, I need to learn how to do that. I, I observe women, when they say things, they say it in such a roundabout way and they still hit the point. 
almost like shooting an arrow that curves but gets there and I'm just like bam direct but um I want to learn how to do that better because fruits of the spirit there's some in there that are also gentleness <clears throat> kindness um, long suffering being patient so I need to grow in those areas and I desire to I sometimes feel like it's playing a game like oh, I gotta speak a certain way just to like do this thing the right way I'm like I'd rather just speak directly I'm a big fan of that clear communication but anyways I want to be more like Jesus so um, in this situation today you know we hashed it it's all good you know for the most part I mean I'll see him tomorrow and hopefully things are cool but what frustrated me in this anger um, hatred you know expression hatred of wicked things and frustrating things and just me sharing with my um, like my my two leaders that I would report to and stuff um, I just kind of got in the flesh a little bit and as I explained the situation um, and they both backed me and they're like bro we got you but um I feel like I got in the flesh a little bit my language got a little colorful a little bit about like man what the heck and um and I like later to, to my one of my managers I said I said bro I, I apologize and he was like no I was like he, he kind of um understood but um I've been sharing Jesus with him and stuff and I'm like this is why I love Jesus so much because he's perfect and I'm not <laughs> and I'm like and I need him I want to be like him um, because uh, like the Apostle Paul I do the things I don't want to do I don't do the things I want to do wretched man that I am anyways um, anger hatred it's a it's a fine line and especially you men watching you know how it is we uh, pride can creep in on us not to say I can't for the women too, but testosterone too. And we men are powerful. You know, we are like decisions away from, you know, you can make a bad decision and um, we're powerful. You know, wars and killings. I mean, men do these things. Um, not to say I'm going that far with it, but I'm just saying like, um, it's uh, it's how we're wired. You know how we are. We can be we can be so wild as men. And, um, and it's in the heart. When you grow in your faith, it's in the heart. It's... Um, in your mind and then it comes in your words a little bit um, but you guys get the gist of what I'm saying I hope so um, yeah I pray that was, was for somebody who needed to maybe hear that to anyone who may be like me and guys wrap it up quick here with a little word on the epistles contain no preparatory warnings of an impending tribulation for church age believers interesting huh so I am of the pre-tribulational rapture belief system, of course. You guys know me. And just think about it, right? Like if we were going through any of that wrath, would there not be more language, right, from the Lord on do this, do that, look for this type of things? Well, let's just see some of this. Um, <clears throat> God's instructions to the church through the epistles contain a variety of warnings. But never do they warn believers to prepare for entering and enduring the tribulation, this time of Daniel's 70th week. They warn vigorously about coming error and false prophets. See Acts 20, 29-30, 2 Peter 2, verse 1, 1 John 4, 1-3, Jude 4, all right, coming error, false prophets. They warn against ungodly living. Ephesians 4, um, 1 Thessalonians 4, 3 to 8, Hebrews 12, 1, talk about some of these ungodly living, um, you know, just uh, preparatory warnings about these things from these epistles. They even admonish believers to endure in the midst of present tribulation. That would be the flipsis in the Greek, not the orge in the Greek, which is the wrath. The flipsis is the general tribulations and struggles we go through. So those present tribulations, you'll see that in 1 Thessalonians 2, 13 to 14, 2 Thessalonians 1, verse 4, 1 Peter. But however, there is an absolute silence on preparing the church for any kind of tribulation like that, which is found in Revelation 6 to 18. Um, those first few chapters talking to the church, the church is mentioned 21, 22 many times, and then through 6 to 18, crickets, no word, no language towards the church, no addressing to the church. Really? The Lord would teach us about all these uh, um, 
coming error, false prophets, ungodly living. He, he keeps us well equipped. But when it comes to the final seven years of human history, crickets, <clears throat> pre-tribulational rapture, just consider consider this, my proponents or uh, opponents to pre-tribulational rapture. Consider what I'm saying in some of these scriptures. Just, just consider it. You know, let's reason together. It is incongruous then that the scriptures would be silent about such traumatic change for the church. I would think so. The Lord tells us everything. Everything needed for um, godly living and um, salvation and our walk, our sanctification. <clears throat> if any time of the rapture other than pre-tribulational were true, one would expect the epistles to teach the reality of the church in the tribulation, the purpose of the church in the tribulation, and the conduct of the church in the tribulation. However, there is no teaching whatsoever, only a pre-tribulational rapture satisfactory, <clears throat> satisfactorily explains this silence. In my opinion, from some things I've researched and yeah, consider these things. And to those of you who agree with that pre-tribulation catching away, uh, let that just bless you and solidify you in that blessed hope that uh, Jesus is coming for us and he took the wrath for us. Kindest, most loving thing our God could do for us. Praise Jesus for that. So guys, as I wrap it up here, as I spoke about the wrath, the anger, <clears throat> harnessing that stuff, not being permissive of sin, drawing a hard line against it, but not crossing it. It's a delicate balance. Come Lord Jesus, we're so imperfect at many different things. This is my struggle. I share a little bit with you guys on, um, well, who can do it? You know, who, who can do all these things? I'm going to close here with um, Matthew 19, 26. But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, with men, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you tomorrow. God willing, God bless you.